give us a brief introduction to the topic is Mr. Dimitar Segura. Hello, Dimitar Segura. Hello. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. So, let's get started with an easy question. What is sports diplomacy? Well, actually, your question is not that easy. According to Sir Murai, sports diplomacy uses sports events and people to inform, engage, and create favorable image among foreign publics and organizations to shape their perception in a way that is conducive for sending government's foreign policy goals. Therefore, we can say that sports diplomacy belongs to a wide umbrella of public policy. That sounds like a lot of pressure for the athletes. So, what effect does this uh, diplomatic role have on them? Well, actually, some people are fearing that diplomacy may take away some of the purity of sport, because, for example, it has been abused from the Nazis for propaganda reasons. Yes, sport diplomacy has a great potential because it has the ability to transcend social, cultural, and linguistic differences, and also to bring people together. Sport and sporting institutions have drastically increased their power, scope, Therefore, we can say that there is no greater stage than the stadium. Yes, that sounds plausible to me. It reminds me of the words of Andy Harper, who said the following thing about his sport. What I love about football is that it brings people together across religious divides, geographical divides, and also political divides. It is the biggest diverse, innovative, uh, or pervasive culture that humankind knows. This quote brings us to the next section of this segment, samples of sports diplomacy in recent history. For that, we turn to our senior correspondent, Ubina Idekwe. Yeah, a good example of sports diplomacy was the Sochi Olympic Games in 2014. Yeah, we had a couple of issues around the world, especially between Russia and the West. Uh, we had the problem of uh, anti-gay law in Russia, we had uh, the Crimea annexation by Russia, and of course the uh, Ukraine crisis. We, during the opening ceremony, it's a norm in Olympic Games that Western leaders attend the Olympic uh, uh, opening ceremony. But then that was not the case there. And of course, Ukraine, uh, Ukraine national, uh, national te Paralympic teams snubbed the opening ceremony as well. That was not good for sports and in politics, of course, in general. But then we also had the fifth rank opening, which represents America, not the United States per se, but the American continent. It was a big diplomatic issue. It also tells stories about the game. You, at the end, we had uh, we, everybody was actually happy that. Uh, U.S. and Russia did not meet in the final game of the hockey uh, uh, competition. Uh, yeah, it was the power of sports and who knows what would have happened if the two nations met and we, we, we start having the discussion of who won and who lost. Yeah, another good example of sports diplomacy was the issue involving uh, Slatan Ibrahimovic. He scored a goal recently in his, food, uh, in his club and he removed his shirt and surprisingly we saw about 15 names on his, uh, tattooed on his body. He says that was done on purpose to represent millions of uh, people around the world who are suffering from hunger and poverty and that was to raise uh, fund for the UN World Food Program. And this is a good example of sports diplomacy. It shows the power of sports. And this is also just one example of million, thousands of uh, sportsmen and women around the world who use their soft power to raise awareness, be it social, ecological, uh, environmental, or economic issues, just for, human, uh, for the humanity. Sports do really help. On that note, we are at the end of today's segment. Next week, we cover the history of David Beckham's haircut with the crucial question, which one was the worst? So, have a nice evening, and we'll see you next week. Yours, Yahase. Just to raise awareness for this very program for the United Nations. <laughs>
Sorry. The issue of uh, 